Hello, hello, hello. Hey, fun people. Welcome to Everything Aja. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome to Everything Aja, the place where I, Aja, <laughs> I'm a curriculum specialist who helps parents and teachers teach reading all five components of reading. That's phonics, phonological awareness, comprehension, fluency, and even vocabulary without the feeling of burnout and overwhelm. So I'm so excited to have you on our weekly lives, i.e. better known as Chat It Up Saturday. Woo -woo. Um, and here on Chat It Up Saturday, this is where we like to gather, to join together, to talk about hot educational topics, to get your tips, your tricks, and even some strategies. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the chat box. It's right there, open and ready for you to, to um, get any questions that you might have. Um, you might have. Today, today we are talking about about spring ideas, games, and activities. Spring ideas, games, and activities. So let me know down below in the chat box, what are some of your favorite spring games, ideas, activities? Go ahead, pop out your notebook, your notepad. Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, I know I have like a lot of energy. <laughs> And you guys might hear some rain. It is storming here. I mean, storming here. For those that don't know, I am located in Georgia in the U.S. And um, it's like we were just at 80 earlier this week. And now it is 52 degrees outside. So we're in culture shock. We are in total culture shock right now. Happy Saturday. Woo -woo. Um, so excited to have you on today. All right. So let's just, for those that do not know me, let me just introduce myself just, you know, really, really quick. Uh, my name is Aja. I'm an educational consultant right here at Everything Aja. I have been a kindergarten through fifth grade curriculum specialist. That means I was an administrator over all things teaching and learning. You name it, I've been over it from creating classes to EIP schedules to managing um, all the data curriculum for advancing students to remediating students. You name it, I have been over it. K-5. I've also taught in Title I schools. And for those that don't know what a Title I school is, that's just a school that most of their children are on free and reduced lunch. Um, and what you end up finding in schools that have a lot of children that are on free and reduced lunches, they tend to be struggling readers. So I have over a decade of experience working in those environments. I have my reading endorsement. I'm certified in Orton Gillingham, I'm currently doing the letters training. And so you name it, I um well-versed, well-versed, well-versed. Also have my special specialist degree in addition to my bachelor's and master's in early childhood education. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Rochelle. So excited to see you. Girl, we have missed you. We have certainly missed you. I know you used to be on our Chatted Up Saturdays. Look, every Saturday. So we have definitely missed you. So glad that you're able to join us live. Let me know down below in the chat box. Is it spring break? Because it is spring break here. And it was so warm all spring break. And then now, right at the end of spring break, it's really cold and raining the next few days. So I'm like, really? Really? Um, let me know where are all my spring breakers. You're like, whoo, I'm enjoying my break. I'm enjoying my break. Um, let me just quickly share with you. What we do here on Everything Aja, I help teachers and homeschool parents teach their struggling readers without ever feeling overwhelmed, helping them go from feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and experiencing teacher burnout to feeling confident, prepared, and truly, truly, truly making a difference, making a difference. Um, Rosha, you said you, you missed us all. Glad to be on today. Yes, so glad to have you. Is it because of spring break? It, it, it might be because of spring break, but hopefully you can look, move, look, move some things around to be on here on Saturdays. Well, I am so excited to be able to present to you um, 15 spring games, ideas, and activities. So I hope you are ready. As the I know I'm talking about it being cold today, but it was just 80. It was just 80. As the weather kind of warms up, um, you know, this is the time of year where our kids, they get really antsy. Right. Am I right or am I right? You know, the countdown, I was looking on Instagram and I saw this teacher and she was like, countdown to the summer. I was like, man, 
Girl, we ain't, we're not even back from spring break yet. You already counting down to the summer, you know? Uh, <laughs> and so you can only imagine if we are counting down already, then our children are counting down. So this is typically the time of year where they're antsy, they're moving around. Um, teaching those long, drawn out reading lessons aren't going to fly during this time of year because for some unknown reason, when the spring happens, and y'all let me know in the chat box, their attention span drastically decreased, drastically decreased. He said spring break three weeks ago. Oh, that is so weird. Y'all had spring break in the cold. <laughs> y'all has y'all had winter break. Y'all had an extended winter break because it was cold three weeks ago here. Here, I forget where you located, Rochelle. Let us know. Um, but yes. And typically during this time of year, um, as it starts to warm up, we like to go outside. Our kids like to go outside and you do have to do different things outside of the box to keep them interested. So today we're going to go over some spring ideas, games and activities. And I want to um, let you guys know this isn't just about me giving value to you. So if you have any additional spring games, spring ideas or spring activities, feel free to just drop them down below in the chat box. Um, we are a community here and everything. I a community of supportive, <laughs> supportive teachers and parents who want to teach reading without burnout. So like I said, I'm about to get started with my mind, but definitely feel free to drop one that, that you guys have any, um, you know, games, ideas. What is it that you like to do in the spring? Good morning. Good morning. No worries. Oh, you had to dance for your pastor's retirement. Coop, coop. Um, you said Florida. Oh, so you're in Florida. Okay. You said what's cold? I'm I'm with I'm with Mimi. 50 degrees. Absolutely. Like we we had the air on all week and now I'm literally looking at my husband. I'm like, um, can we put some heat on? I needed to go back to being 70, even if I'm indoors. It's crazy. It literally was 80, y'all. 80. And now it's 52 or 54 today. Super crazy. Super crazy. All right. Our first game. And some of these are, are typical. Some of them are not typical. Hey, our first game is a typical one. Um, but it is egg and, sp uh, egg and spoon race. So I know we enjoyed doing this as when we were kids. Y'all remember having the egg on the spoon. Um, whereas this is when you give each player. And let me just start off by saying you don't just need it to be easy to do eggs. Y'all, the eggs are about to be 50% off on Monday. Okay, so get any, you know, unused Easter eggs and play this game next week. All right, all right. So the egg and spoon, um, the egg and spoon race, you're going to give each player, each child, a spoon and an egg. You're going to have them line up at one side of the room, or if you're outside, give them a designated time to spoon place to start. When you say go, players must balance the egg on a spoon and race to the finish line without dropping it. The first player to cross the finish line without dropping their egg wins. Now, let's tie this into reading. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So this is, <laughs> so this is the game, right? Egg and spoon race. And so how you could tie this to reading is if you had a, if you read a book to the kids before, right? Great level book. Now, you know how every book, they have multiple choice questions. You guys know, always trying to work smarter, not harder. You can read out the choices. If true, I would even make the, the questions true or false. So it's even simple. If it's true, they get to run. If it's false, they have to stay. Okay. Um, and, and make it so it can literally be. Let's say we are doing the three little pigs, right? And so they're all starting off with their egg and their spoon at the line. And you say, true or false? Remember, if it's true, they have to run to the to play the game, right? Um, so just make sure everybody's listening. But um, true or false, um, the big bad wolf blew down the brick house. Nobody moved. True or false, the big bad wolf blew down the straw house. And now they run to the finish line. Woo! So that just kind of incorporates uh, a little bit of reading comprehension. Of course, I was adding a few false before you give the true, just to make, make the game stretch out just a little bit. Um, 
But yes, yes, yes. So there is the egg and spoon race game number one. Game number two, two is a bean bag toss. And if you don't have a bean bag, you can definitely use like the little balls. I know I have like little balls that you can use instead of a bean bag. Um, but you're gonna set up a target with the different point values. Um, and so for me, because y'all know I like to work smart, not harder. I like buckets. You can use anything for a bucket. You could go in your, your kitchen for those of us that um, want to work smarter, not harder. Go get some Tupperware, like the little Tupperware jars, and then put like a sticky note for a point value. Don't have to spend a dime, okay? Um, but you're going to give the different targets different point values. So one will say five points, one will say 10 points, one could say 15 points. Then players must take turns throwing the bean buckets at the target. The player with the highest points till at the end of the game wins. Now, how to make this focus around reading? Dun, dun, dun. Um, of course, y'all, I'm going to tell you, do a multiple choice, you know, get on um, readworks.com, print out a worksheet that correlates with what you're teaching in reading. So for example, if you are teaching main idea, type in second grade main idea, whoop, it gives you an a ABC multiple choice worksheet relating to main idea. Now, um, for the different buckets with the different point values, you would then just put also A, B, C, and D so that it corresponds. Now, this means that the answers that are A are going to be worth less than the answer that is D, and that is fine because if they get it right, they're, you know, they're going to be able to have the opportunity to get all the different point values. And then you, instead of you know them just throwing it, you would then say the question or read the question out loud. And then all your children will have to like toss the bean bag um, into the designated correct answer. This also helps you work as an assessment because you can visually see which children are trying to correctly target the answer. The other thing, y'all know how kids are. Y'all know how kids are. They're gonna kind of look around, look at their friends. And <laughs> let's say almost the kids choose B, but you have that one kid that chose C and the correct answer was C. Then you know that half those other kids either were followers or just really did not understand the question. All right, let me catch up in the chat box real quick. You said Easter snap, cold weather, girl. Yes, girl, yes. Good one. Glad you enjoyed the first game. Um, you said socks or beanbags. That's a great alternative. I like that because, I mean, I said balls, but socks works too because that's soft as they're all throwing stuff. Yes, I like that. All right, we're going to say beanbags or socks. <laughs> Not balls, but my balls are really light. They're they're same balls that you would find in like you know the little play pins so you can get like 100 balls for like five dollars um so that's what i use to do a lot of my learning games um but i like socks because hey <laughs> because one they're soft so as you have like 20 kids throwing out a basket it'll you know it won't hurt anybody to use some socks all right, so cool. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, our third game is a flower planting relay. Now, during this time of year, I know this one's not as, look, you may have to put some, it requires you to get some flowers. But um, during this time of year, a lot of children, especially if you're dealing with children, don't have anybody that teaches Title I schools um, or inner city schools, a lot of those children they've never planted, planted a flower. They've never seen the process of a flower grow. I know second grade um, here in Georgia, they go through the life cycle of a, of a flower, um, but they do not have that background knowledge or experience. So you can actually give that to them um, and just at least expose them to the idea of a flower growing. All right, you said, I'm listening. <laughs> I love it. See, that's why I miss you, Rochelle. I miss you, girl. All right, so the flower planting relay, you divide all the children into different teams. You set up two buckets at the start and the finish line for each team. So you can divide, depending on how many kids you have in your classroom, divide them up. They're on one side of the room. You have the corresponding buckets. Like I said, go get Tupperware. Work smarter, not harder as if, if you can. Um, because they don't technically have to be a flower pot if you don't have it. If you don't have it, come on now. Uh, Keisha might be able to tell us some alternative things um, that we can do on a budget. Um, but I say you can use Tupperware for this. If you want to like say, hey, I should, mm -mm, my kids deserve a flower pot, then 
do you do you all right but you're gonna um they're gonna you're gonna fill one bucket up with soil and the other one with actual flowers now you can do you can use fake flowers if you wanted to um when you say go the first player on each team they run with the bucket of soil and then they're gonna fill a small cup with soil so just like a little dixie cup Okay, so they're doing the little little Dixie cups. Um, you said a waste basket. Yes, that works. That works. Yes. Um, look, I'm like I'm trying to tell you how to do this on a budget. Um, but I know soil. You you will have to buy soil for this one. But some of them are free. Some of the games are free. All right, so. They'll get a little little cups and they'll fill it with with the soil, um, and then they'll run to the other bucket and then they'll actually plant the flower and run back to the next player. The first team to have their all of their entire team, every single member, planting all the flowers wins. How to make this corresponding to reading? Do this exact same game exactly how we did it, but before the next person goes, have them answer some sort of. ELA question. So let's say you give them, let's stick to the ReadWorks idea. That team is completing a ReadWorks worksheet, but one person goes at a time. So before I even go, I have to answer number four on that worksheet. Bam, I answer number four. I take my soil. I go, I plant my flower. I run back. Now the next person has to then answer their question. Bam, now they go, they do their soil. They go, they go, keep going back. Um, and then you can have it in one or two ways it can be once every person in the team has gone or until the worksheet or whatever it is that they're filling out is complete so that's how you can add in some some learning in there and get them prepared for spring <laughs> But yes, that's the flower planting relay, flower planting relay. Um, and hopefully dealing with children that they've never planted seeds before or flowers, this can get, get them excited. Now, I do suggest for this game, I would even almost do flake flowers from the Dollar Tree. Come on now, where are my Dollar Tree people? Um but you, then you can use like real, real soil because they ne might have never experienced, you know, touching soil, what it feels like. So this just gives them a fun way to get excited about the spring. And you never know how this could ignite an interest in a child. Um, you said science and reading at the same time. Come on now. Yes. Integration, right? Inner. Gracious. Um, the next one, okay, yeah, I know y'all know if you've been following me for a long time, you know I love a good scavenger hunt, right? So scavenger hunt, you can find items around a designated area. So this one is more of an indoor scavenger hunt. Okay, because I'm going to have another scavenger hunt in a minute, but that one's outdoors. So this is the indoor scavenger hunt. So you want to hide items around, you know, your classroom or um, if you're homeschooling, and you know, around your living room or so forth. Um, and then create a list of items for the players to find. So you want to tell children what it is that they're actually going to find. Now, relate the items to spring. So you can hide eggs. You can hide little 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 fake flowers. You can hide anything that relates to spring. A little frog. You can hide whatever it is. Just make the items relate to spring, i.e., a spring scavenger hunt. Um, and each player, each player um, gets a copy of the list. They search for the items on the list. The first person. Or the first team, you can divide children into teams that finds all the items on the list would win. How can you relate this to reading? <laughs> Y'all know, I just, I, I don't know, I like effects. I like effects, okay? I like effects a little extra. Um, but what you can then do is do just like we've been doing, have some kind of sheet that you're already doing during this time of year, i.e. from ReadWorks because ReadWorks is free. Whoop, whoop. And, um, and then what you would then do is literally kind of correlate. So, for example, on answer choice number one, I would actually put find the turtle. Not turtle, frog, because frogs are spring. Find the frog. For question number two, then you're going to look for the egg. For question number three, you're going to look for the chicken. For question number four, I want you to look for the flower. So as they are completing that ReadWorks worksheet, they have designated things that they're walking around trying to find. Um, and then if you have a whole bunch of kids in your classroom and you're like, I don't have 22 frogs and 22 
you know, flowers, no worries. You can also put a twist to this as, as they find one of the objects, then they have to um, write down where they found it and then put it back in the exact same hiding place. So on their worksheet, they would have the answer, i.e., you know, main idea, and then put found flower under the, um, re in the reading center. Perfect. Um, under question D, found the frog in the classroom sink. Um, and so then that way the kids, you know, get to keep the items in the same place and you don't have to like buy a whole bunch. You can just buy, you know, one set of objects. All right. You say, yes, Bonnie, the flower one incorporates problem solving, critical thinking, life skills, and motor engagement. Yes. I love it. Come on, connecting it to the standards. Yes, yeah, he said, most of these encourage critical thinking, um, which is a need. Yay, I'm glad you like these. Look, I was I was like, I want to provide value for <laughs> they like during this time of year. I know it's spring break and some of us are like, whoo, I need some things to, to keep them engaged. Um, glad, glad, glad I can help. He said, love it since I love ReadWorks. I'm telling you, I know I put you on ReadWorks. Keisha, when I tell you ReadWorks is the best thing ever. Um, if y'all do not get on ReadWorks, no, I'm not getting paid from Reworks. It is a free, <laughs> free resource. But when I tell you it is a life saver, another place you can go to for really engaging standard-based worksheets um, is k5learning.com. They have re reading and math, um, mainly for reading ELA. So a lot of your ELA standards, um, you know, dealing with grammar, um, dealing with prefixes and so forth, all of those kind of worksheets you can find on, find on k5learning.com. That's k5learning.com. All right. <laughs> um, so look, we're just going to keep working smarter, not harder, and relating these to the spring. All right. So as you guys know, one thing, I know Easter is tomorrow, and one thing that is in my daughter's Easter basket um, is chalk probably because it's one of the cheapest things you can literally go buy and you can get like, I know I got a pack of 12 for 50 cents at Walmart, y'all, Walmart. Um, you said lots of anecdotal notes for pre-K with very little adjustments. Come on now. Yes, yes. Um, but our next game deals with chalk whoop, whoop, and it's called sidewalk chalk art. Now, I do know that, um, you know, some schools might say um, you guys are not putting chalk outside in the parking lot. So, hey, I'm sorry if your school's like, nope. But for all my homeschool parents out here, you could definitely do this one. But the sidewalk chart activity is you give each child um, a set of sidewalk chalk, have them draw pictures on the sidewalk or driveway, I encourage the activity to provide them a theme if desired. Y'all gonna see where we're going in a second. Um, after a set time, have players vote on their favorite artwork. The player with the most votes wins. So I love this one because you can relate it to reading in so many different different ways. So first, let's talk about for upper grades, okay? We're not even for upper grades, but theme, for example, because it said that. Let's say you read a book and the theme is forgiveness, okay? So now children have to then take their chalk and they have to create a, a piece of work, an artwork that has the same theme as the book you guys just read, okay? Another thing you can do is, 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 oh goodness, is sequencing. So they can also do, maybe you have three different teams, like you divide the kids into three different teams and they have to do beginning, middle and end. And they have to draw a picture of the beginning of the story, the middle of the story and the ending of the story. And then after all the teams have you know, done their pictures, they take a step back and they see like, is the sequence right? Yes. Awesome. Um, another thing you can do is have children draw their artwork of their favorite part of the story. So you read a story. What was your favorite part? They draw their picture of their favorite part. And then if you do this one and every child has their own you know, chalk writing, then you can almost do it like a picture walk or like you can actually call it like an artwork gallery. And then they can walk around and kind of like look at everybody's artwork. And then they can then see if they can identify what part of the story he or she drew. Oh, yeah. They can give the people feedback. They can comment. Um, 
you know, kind of however you want to take this to the next level. But I love this idea because one, it gets them outside. It gets them outside. Um, you can do so many, so so many things with this, especially dealing with the standards, but making it fun, like um, and and getting them because kids do not get to play with chalk. I don't know what's going on with this new day and age, but chalk just it's gone. It's gone out the window. I don't know what happened. I love chalk, but. <laughs> They don't get to play with chalk as often as, you know, we did growing up. All right. You said y'all are putting on ReadWorks and the other ones. Thanks. Yes. K5learning.com. That's free as well. So both ReadWorks and K5learning.com are both free. I use both of them religiously. Um, You said you did chalk. If your school doesn't want it on sidewalks, come on now. Offer it to your class, then clean up afterwards with soapy water um, and cheap um, brush brooms. The kids will like that. Ooh, I like that. Having the kids, look, having the kids clean it up. That too, if you're a STEM school, we talk about, you know, our environment. <laughs> so that you can throw that in there too. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much for that, Rochelle. You said drawing, kids love it. It's how pre-K does book reports. Come on now, you can do a book report and they do that with the chalk. Yes, yes. Um, drawing at the beginning, middle, and end. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Whoop, whoop. All right, yes. I love the ideas flowing. Look, we're just on game number five, y'all. We are rocking and rolling. If you have not yet already, let me just start off by saying to ask you to hit the like button and give this video a thumbs up. If you're finding these games helpful to help you get your kids engaged in the springtime, I ask that you just hit that thumbs up button and like this video. That helps support us here and allows other teachers and homeschool parents to find us as well so that they too can find and use some of these spring games. All right, the next idea, whoop, whoop, um, let me make it bigger, whoop, whoop, let me make it bigger, is bubble the blo bubble blowing contest, bubble blowing contest. Um, and so with this one, I will state bubbles are fairly cheap and you can buy them at the Dollar Tree. You can get the little, the little, the little ones and you can really find a pack of like 20 for like two to three dollars. So if you get the little ones, each child will then have their own bubbles. Some children, especially if you're dealing with um, children like me that are in Title I schools, they may have never blown a bubble before. Um, and so you're ex you're exposing them to a new, a new hobby, a new, a new life experience. Something as simple as blowing bubbles. Um, but you're gonna give each child or player um, a container of bubble solution in the bubble wand, have them stand in the designated area on your signal, say go. They're gonna blow as many bubbles as they can in the set amount. The player with the most bubbles then wins. Just like the game before with the egg toss, um, you would use this with a some sort of worksheet and you can do true or false questions with the bubbles um, and then and play the game like just like that. Hope that makes sense. Basically, the same way we were doing with the egg toss, you're doing with the bubbles. There we go. Um, another thing you can do is read a book about bubbles. So from my lower grades, you know, children, <laughs> they love of doing stuff like this. Um, but if you read a book um, on bubbles, then they can blow bubbles relating to their book relating to that book. So there's a book called Pop um, that is about blowing bubbles. There's some nonfiction books about bubbles. And the reason I like nonfiction, because of course there's fiction books out there, but the reason I like nonfiction books about bubbles is because it gives children um that real world connection. And so often they don't get to read nonfiction books and they also don't get to relate to nonfiction books. So of course, you know, there's fiction books about bubbles all over the place, but try to do some nonfiction books. From all my teachers that are doing lower grades, like pre-K, you can then have them practice, you know, phonics, bubbles, start with b b B <laughs> and, and finding try to even relate that to the letter B. B can be the letter of the day, or if you're doing a spiral view, um, a spiral review of the day, um, or something like that, dealing with the letter B. And now children get the opportunity um, to blow the bubbles. 
So there, there, there's the, bu the bubble one, the bubble one. You said, come on now, after Easter, Clarence. Yes. The, tell me, y'all. Going on clearance on Monday, y'all. Going on clearance on Monday. Um, you say you can probably find a cheap bag of the small bubble containers in the party store as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. You said blow bubbles every... Oh, I love... Yes. Come on, Rochelle. Didn't even think about that. Come on now. Um, lower grades. Yes. Reading a book. You're reading a book. Uh, the letter of the day is the b sound. You're doing explicit phonics and structured literacy. They have to blow a bubble every time they hear the b sound. Yes, thanks for sharing. I told y'all, it's not just me. We're doing this as a group. I love it. I love it. Love, love, love the idea. Um, he said, or buy a class size of bubbles and give each child a bathroom cup. I've seen that. I, I have seen that. But at this one, they're so cheap when you can get a dozen for $3. <laughs> y'all know the little ones. And she said, after Easter, Clarence bubbles. If y'all don't know it, Walmart always does like a big after the day after holiday so monday right after you get off work just run to walmart get you some bubbles get you some chalk that's how i got um our chalk for 50 cent it was it's a whole stack of 12 got it for 50 cent walmart look right after easter last year and i bought like i kind of bought, bought a lot y'all i bought like 10 of them <laughs> because i have all these kids that i get for but they were 50 cent each so it worked all right. Earlier we talked about, hold on, before we get going. So older words can blow, blow the bubbles when they read a vocabulary word. I love that. I love that. A word, a word that has a prefix or suffix on it so that they're listening for vocabulary. They're listening to prefix or suffix. They're um, a word, you know, like you can really do some ELA with it and they're blowing bubbles. I love that. And then it also helps listening, um, their listening skills, you know, Definitely helps your listening skills. Said the graduation bubbles are small and cheap as well. Yes, yes. Look, teach smarter, not harder. <laughs> I love it. All right, so earlier we did um, a scavenger hunt indoors, but you guys know it's getting warm. Your children are going to want to go outside. So you can also do a nature scavenger hunt um, outside. Now, before this, just so I could throw in the reading component, there are so many books and I can give you guys a list, but there are so many books about what's going on outside. So you can literally choose a nonfiction book for upper grades about, you know, outdoors, nature. For it, for the lower grades, you can use a fiction book that deals with, you know, going outside. And then after you read that book, you know, during your read aloud, you then identify things that they either saw in the picture, like what are some things that we would see in nature? You can do an anchor chart, allow them to brainstorm. What are some things that they would find? A leaf, a rock, a flower, what are some things that someone so found in the story outside? Oh, he he found a branch. Okay, um, such and so found found a flower that you made a wish on. Great. So then you kind of create an anchor chart of list of items that they would find outside. Then. If you want to take this a step further, you can then just go copy that list, um, you know, go to the little copier, copy that list, or even have children copy the list, whatever, draw pictures of the items if they're in lower grades, and then take their list outside and then have them go find and searching for these items while they're outside. Um, now, if you wanted a winner, the first player or team, you could divide up the kids into teams, or the first person that actually finds all of the items on their, li their, their list would win. Now, I made this into a game, but you don't have to make it a game. You can just have this an activity and all the kids then find all of the items on their list. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so getting y'all outside, getting y'all into this pollen. Did anybody have allergies or sinuses? Like my entire house, all my family, they are like, because <laughs> we went to Six Flags last Sunday and the pollen was ridiculous. So now they are like, I can't breathe. So hopefully some of this rain calms it down. But the next game involves them going outside again. So on any kids that have allergies, you know, just just tell the parents in advance. Like we're going to go outside, you know, it's warming up. So take their Zyrtex in the morning. Um, but all right, our next game, we talked about chalk earlier. Maybe I just want everybody to buy chalk. I don't know. Uh, you, you have allergies, girl. I don't. I had them one year. I don't, but I, this is the worst. I'm dealing with a husband and a mama that have them. It's 
crazy. Um, but our next game, our next game deals with chalk, and you also have to go back outside. But it is hopscotch. Whoop, whoop. Y'all remember playing hopscotch? Oh, so much fun. Um, and for this game, I'm just gonna give you the education part and oh, I'm gonna tell you the game and then um and then do it. You draw a hopscotch board on the ground. Um, you if you do not have chalk, you can do tape, and you could use tape indoors so that you're not going outside. Maybe you can do this in the hallway if you have like a secluded area in your school or you know in the front of your classroom even. Um, but you have players take turns tossing a marker on the board. Now I'm going to tell you how to twist this education. Um, then players, you know, hop on the board. They skip, find the square with the marker. The first player to complete the board without stepping on the line or losing their balance wins. Okay, y'all remember good old hopscotch. You said you were going to ask about hopscotch. Yes. <laughs> Look, we always on one accord, girl. We always on one accord. Um, so this is how I would make this education going educational. And y'all can definitely feel free, add your ideas. Going back to getting the worksheet on read works or learning A to Z. I mean, read works or K5learning.com. <laughs> Learning A to Z is something else, but that is not free. So we're going to keep to the free resources right now. Um, but you can have a, a, a multiple sheet, a multiple choice worksheet. Um, do the same way. They toss the toss the marker, toss a beanbag, toss something, toss their socks. Come on now, Bonnie. Toss their socks, and they're trying to get to that number. Now, if they cannot hop to the next number until they've correctly answered the question. So the really cool thing about this way is, let's say a child throws it at five, then they're probably you know answering a few more questions. If a child only threw it at two, they only have to answer two you know of your questions. Um, and then as one child is done then you immediately go to the next child, et cetera. Um, the only, only downside about doing hopscotch is the, the time when kids are not actually playing. So I would almost have them have another activity going on at the same time. Um, if you're outside, however, and you have space for this, let's say you, your school has, because our school had um, has like a basketball court, like or a big open area, then every child could have their own hopscotch. But I know space might be limited. And so every child might not have their own hopscotch. So you almost can, you know, tweak the game based on your space. But if every child had their own hopscotch thing, then all you have to do is yell the questions one at a time and they just keep playing on their hopscotch, you know, board. Um, but if you're inside and you're limited with space and you just have one hopscotch, then just have something for children to do when they're actually not the ones physically playing on the hopscotch, you know, board. All right. Y'all know I'm always about maximizing instructional time. Okay. Um, you said one-to-one -one correspondence for pre-K. Come on now. Let y'all, y'all are on it. Yes. Yes. Come on, throw out those standards. <laughs> Yes, this also teaches one-on-one -on -one correspondence for children. All right, so the next one, y'all, y'all going to be like, Aja, that's going to take a lot of space. They're going to get mad. They're going to be all over the place. So tread lightly, tread lightly on the next one. This also would be a really good game to maybe get your PE coach involved in, um, but this allows children to kind of like run around, <laughs> run around. Um, Okay, I'm sorry. Was, did y'all hear my daughter? She just yelled. She saw a spider in the bathroom. She's scared of bugs. She's scared of bugs. Um, but hold on. Before before we go to this next game and y'all yell at me, let me see what Rochelle said in the chat box. She said, instead of numbers, you can also put character names, events in the story, et cetera, on the board. Yes, I love that. I really, really like that. I really like that. But Bonnie was like, ooh, yes. And then as you ask questions, they toss toss the beanbag or toss the sock into the correct one and then have to hop to it. Yes, Rochelle, I like that. I like that better than the ones I gave. <laughs> 
I like that one a lot. I like that one a lot. But all right, our next game, don't yell at me, is Capture the Flag. Y'all remember this one back in back when we were in elementary school? That's why I said you might want to get your PE teacher involved while our kids are like running around all over the place. But Capture the Flag. So you're going to divide all your children into two teams, Team A and Team B. Each team has a flag to kind of defend their area. Now, of course, we used to say like your jail area, but you don't have to use the term terminology jail because you don't want to trigger any children um but they're trying to defend their defend their flag the goal is to then capture the other team's flag and bring it back to your team's area without getting caught by another team um players who are caught are then sent to the other team's quote-unquote jail area the first team to capture the other team's flag would win now must say Make sure you give them a rule, like you only tap um, below the waist. Y'all know when we used to have to play this when we were kids, you had to tap below the waist or grab the little flag off of them, um, you know, however you want to say it so the kids aren't running around slapping each other. Uh, but y'all remember it capture the flag. So how you can make this educational, one, you can, of course, you can read a like a book about you know the the idea sports. Um, for me, during this time, um, I was gonna say you can work on the characteristic of working as a team, and you talk about teamwork because this game forces children to work as a team. So you can read a book about teamwork. <laughs> there are plenty of books around teamwork and then also play the game. Another thing I thought about is allowing the children to play the game and then turning this into a writing experience. So as children that played Capture the Flag, there's a lot of things that go on in their mind. Um, they one do the excite, like there's some kids might feel anxious, some kids don't like it. I was a kid that I was like, okay, it was too much going on. Some kids love it, they love running around. Um, but you allow them to play the game and then you allow them to write a narrative writing on their experience of playing Capture the Flag, especially if this is their first time ever playing the game. There's a lot of emotions that go on in Capture the Flag. Uh, exciting too, like, oh, I, I got out. I didn't like getting out or, you know, um, but they can then write a narrative about playing, you know, playing the game. And speaking of writing, y'all know me in writing, our next, um, oh wait, it's not our next one, but coming up, I have another writing. I do have a writing one. Another writing one. Let me see. Where is it? Okay, it's towards the end. But I just feel like saying it now. Since I'm already talking about writing. Um, you said, you go, girl. Aja really knows how to get us thinking. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Look, I'm trying. I'm trying to, do, to just help y'all because kids at this time of year, you know, they're getting a little, getting a little anxious. Um Another thing you can do, and for those that are in Teaching by Design, the membership, you guys have already received um, your spring writing prompts, but give children a spring theme writing prompt and let them write on the topic. Come on now, work smarter, not harder. Um, <laughs> but since we were talking about writing, I just kind of jumped to number 14 real quick. Um, but spring writing prompts get children thinking. The really cool thing about spring writing prompts is they're there's so many things you can do. There's April Fools. There's, of course, there's Easter. There's the the weather, the things that they like to see outside, um, nature writing. And there's so many things that they can write about during this time of year. So come on now, add in some writing in there, add in some writing in there. All right. So the next spring game, I had to do a plug. Okay. I had to do a plug. You said, yes, TBD. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> So y'all know y'all already had y'all have all the writing prompts for free. But um, um, but yes, another thing that my TBD people already have, but you can do is I have a search and find game for spring. Um, and this is just a digital game. So all your children have a sheet of paper. Um, and the game actually comes with a sheet of paper that has all of the spring items. Um, they literally use the checklist to count the items. Thing about this game is it's used for any 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 age even adults i like it it's a nice little icebreaker um in between like while you're teaching so this is like an in-between game right um let's say your kids are feeling antsy 
they're in the middle of reading and they are over it. And you're like, all right, let's take an icebreaker. We need a brain break. This is more of a brain break. Um, but they, you, all the children then, it's the game literally plays on itself. So you hit play, the kids get the instruction. There's four different rounds and their, their object is to find all, uh, count and find all of the spring items. So like in the picture, there are four sons and they have to count up how many, you know, flowers. So this adds math into it. Um, and each round is filled with counting of different items and objects until they can make it to the next round. And so um, the link to that is also down below in the description. You will see how to grab your own spring search and find game to just kind of like woosa, <laughs> woosa and get your children um, ready for spring. All right, you said, uh, Miss Bonnie, you use rhythm, rhyme, and repetition for everything and encourage teachers to use it for classroom management. Ooh, good. I even have kids hum, twinkle, twinkle, little talk when an adult comes in to talk with me. Girl, I used to have those call and responses. <laughs> Man, um, my was funny story. My principal one time, she came in my room. She was like, "You got your kids trained, huh?" I was like, "Yep, you're not gonna catch me for an observation without me knowing you were in here." So every time our door opened, um, there was a call and response that the kids would do, um, and it related to our theme because my theme of my room was like technology. So it was like apps. Um, and so then when somebody opened the door, we, we always had like one of the jobs was like the class leader. Um, and so they would go ring, ring. And all the kids would say, there's an app for that. Um, and then that's when I would know uh, somebody's in the room. <laughs> but, but yes, yes, yes. Glad y'all are on the same page. Um, crazy coming up with these with these prompts and these ideas and activities. Um, I never realized how passionate I was about giving children um, an experience that they may not have at home. Um, and one of those experiences definitely includes kites. A lot of our children have never flown a kite. They've never seen a kite. They are really ignorant to the idea of kites because they've never seen it. And so often in books, this is like one of the first words that they read in stories. They read the word kite, right? Um, and so I love this game because this allows them to actually have that physical experience with a kite. So you want to buy a kite, so you can go to the good old Dollar Tree, get y'all a kite now. Um, and then you're going to take it to an open field, ignore the beach. But um, if you're a homeschool parent, that's why I kind of kept that in there. Um, if you're a homeschool parent, so I make it a really fun experience. Of course, you're in the classroom, you can't make it as fun as a homeschool parent can. Um, but I know just last week, Tangela was on here and she was trying to figure out how to make homeschooling more exciting. We talked about going to a to a park, but you can also go to a beach. Come on now, learning at the beach. Who doesn't like to learn at the beach? I actually did a video on here when I took my daughter to the beach and I made her learn the entire time she was at the beach. Mm -hmm. We did. We played learning games at the beach and she had a ball. But um, you can go get a kite um, and then see if they can fly the kite and see who can keep it up, um, keep, you know, keep it up the longest. And so this allows them, I mean, so many things, the really fine motor skills and flying the kite, understanding um, second grade standard, come on, push and pull, science, someone in science in there. Um, but the second, one of the second grade standards is pushing, push and pulls, understanding how that works. And so kite flying is perfect for that. Um, you can relate it to ELA by once again, phonics. <laughs> you can um, do the, the sound, the k sound. You can also do, um, do the 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 spelling, use the spelling, see if they can spell it, then they get to go fly a kite. You can read a book that involves kites. Um, but just this just allows them to have that that authentic experience. So it's not something that they only see in books because so many children, so many, you know, black and brown children, they don't have that experience of it. They only time they think of kites is when they're reading the word. Like the word kite is everywhere. <laughs> but our children don't have that experience of actually doing it. Um, so I wanted to kind of give them something that they could have that, that authentic real world connection with the word that they're reading over and over and 
over again. Um, he says, some teachers never, come on now, um, you had to do an in-service for teachers to learn how to make and fly kites with students. I love that. Yes. A lot of adults, you're right, we don't have that experience of flying kites. And so when we're reading it to our children and we're they're reading about kites, they, they've never experienced a kite and it just becomes some abstract thing. And this going into like test test taking, um, one thing that, that, and I'm not trying to go too in depth, but one thing that I don't like about a lot of tests is they're subjective to background knowledge. Um, and as our children get to, come on my upper grade teachers, as children get to like third, fourth and fifth grade and they take those state standardized tests, well, they don't have the background knowledge of a lot of these things. So there might be a question on there about flying a kite, but a lot of our, you know, um, African-American children or minority children, they don't have that experience. So they're already at a disadvantage when it comes to answering those lifestyle kind of questions. So let's do give them that experience. They're going to read the word anyways. Um, you said you just wrote lesson plans for a teacher in Atlanta about kites. Come on now. Yes, yes. So let's just give them that experience. Look, some of y'all, let me know. Have you guys ever flown a kite? <laughs> have you ever flown a kite? I used to love doing it as a little kid. My grandparents gave me that experience because they lived in LA. Well, they actually didn't live in LA. They lived in Antioch, California. It was next to, to San Francisco. Um, but they they wanted me to have that experience of flying a kite. Um, They're like, you're going to learn how to fly a kite. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, All right. Next game. Next game. Obstacle course. Da, 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 da. Don't we love obstacle course? The really good thing about obstacle course, you guys, is you can use whatever you already have. You don't have to go buy any materials. I want you to think outside the box. What do you have in your home? What do you have in your classroom? What does your PE teacher have that you can use to build an obstacle course? Set up the obstacle course. You can use um, um, cones, hula hoops, um, and any other objects. And then you're going to time children to see if they can complete the course the fastest. Now, how can we relate this to reading? One, it already relates to math. So one thing that I was going to tell you guys to do for math, and I know we're on here talking about reading, but I just, I, ha I could not talk about, I had to talk about math real quick. Um, but they have to time themselves going through the obstacle course. At the end of the obstacle course, they record their time. After every single child has gone and you have collected the entire, like all the kids, you know, scores, they then have to put those scores into a chart and make a chart of um, how fast they went through the obstacle course. Then you can then tie this into writing. Then they write, um, they write a their they write their narrative on the experience of doing the obstacle course. They can also write down after they've done the chart, write down, okay, what are some things that they would have changed about, you know, if they didn't come in first? What are some things they could have changed um, to go through the course faster? What are some things that, um, you know, why do they think they placed fifth instead of first? Or just have them do some self-reflecting um, via the form of writing, the form of writing. Um, you said the pro and make designer um, kites. Okay, awesome. You said or low income Caucasian children. Yep, they don't have that experience as well. That's a good point. You said same struggle sometimes when it comes to packing experience. Yes, I try to invite the whole families to have these ex to have these experience activities with their children. Yes, yes, yes. Having the experience. Yes. You said or a graph. Yep. I was going with the graph. We were all on the same accord with the graph. Yes. <laughs> with the graph. Um, I was just doing graph and writing, like trying to put the E in there. Um, but these kids just need to run. They Sometimes they just need to run. And the obstacle course allows them to just run. Um, but then you can add the writing into it. Um, you can also do sequencing. Um, after they do the graph, they can now put 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 it after they've made the graph, they can put sequence in order and, you know, do some sequencing with it as well. He said, um, yes, he said um, kids didn't know anything about escalators. Mm, that was a word on your middle for your middle schools years ago. So urban related questions are challenging. Yep. Yep, they're probably like, what is an escalator? I've never, I've never been on an escalator. I've never seen it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Um, and so as the weather changes, 
I just encourage each of you, if anything, you know, you guys walk away from this live. Look, hopefully I'll come back each and every Saturday. Whoop, whoop. Um, but you at least walk away with this saying, okay, let me give my children some out of the box experiences that relate to spring, that still relate to, you know, this time of year, learning and so forth, but giving them what they need to really be um, a well-rounded, a well-rounded student. All right, let's, let's keep rocking and rolling. We, we're getting to, uh, Almost time. So let's just keep rocking and rolling. If you have not yet already, please hit that thumbs up button. I'm giving you 15 spring ideas, games and activities for your little ones during this time of year. So definitely hit the thumbs up button um, and boop, bop this video, share with other coworkers, other homeschool parents, share, 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 let them know like, hey, I just received a whole bunch of ideas. Like Rochelle said earlier, she's like, this is making my, I'm, you're making my brain kind of work. I'm, I'm starting to brainstorm and think, and that's awesome, awesome, awesome. So definitely share, share, and share. All right, let's get to our next game do, 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 do a water balloon toss boop, boop, boop. i know y'all like aja you're getting messy now you're getting messy but during this time of year kids like to go outside that's just inevitable so let's let let's just let hey hey let's just go with it let's just go with it all right water balloon toss y'all Get some water balloons. Once again, you can find them at the Dollar Tree. Try to make this whole thing as cheap and affordable as possible. Fill up the water balloons and then pair up your children into teams. Have them stand a few feet apart. They're going to toss the water balloon back and forth. Then um, once they catch the balloon, then they're going without breaking it, they take a step back. They're going to continue to do this until there's one team left. How do you relate this to reading? Y'all guessed it. Maybe you guessed it. I don't know. To get a worksheet, good old read works, good old um, learning, K k5learning.com. And every time a multiple choice worksheet, um, you can do the multiple choice, have them then yell out answers or you can walk down the line. So for example, the person throwing it, you could say um, they just have to tell you the answer. So I wouldn't spend time listening to each child. So, so let's say, let me do an example. Okay. Um, goodness, goodness, goodness. What is the main idea of the three little pigs? Is it A, um, take shortcuts, B, um, do things the right way, or C, run when danger comes? Okay, and then you just walk down the row of the people that actually have the water balloon in their hand, and then they'll say A, B, C, D, E, F. and so then after they yell it, then you say, those of you guys that said B, go ahead and toss your balloon, and they only get to toss it if they were right. So the the, the object of the game is to be the, the team that you would have to almost give them like a little point. Let's say five correct answers so they step back five times um correctly then they get it but then the kids that got the answer wrong they never moved they had to sit there and wait for the next question so the really cool thing is that if kids then drop the balloon or y'all know the balloon buzz then instead of making them go out they go back to the beginning get a new balloon so this allows children to always remain in the game but the first group of or pair of kids that get to five steps back would actually win or at that point you're you're you know you're out you can go play on the playground um but this just allows children to to keep it going or they could stay in the game until you say it's time i mean <laughs> tweak it as you need to tweak it but this is the water balloon tossed woo, woo, woo. um of course Game idea, not, well, not game idea, but spring idea number 14 were the spring writing prompts. I know we skipped forward when we talked about writing prompts. Um, so if you need writing prompts, check it out down below in the description. Once again, before we get to our last game, let me know how has this experience been for you before we say our, our, our last spring game idea and activity 
for the season. I ask once again to just hit that like button, share, 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 and let me know down below in the chat box. Has this been helpful? Do you have any other ideas um, that you want to talk about during our next Chatted Up Saturdays? We do this each and every Saturday 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And one thing I love about our Chatted Up Saturdays is that we can just come here and literally help each other build. I am loving the conversation down below in the chat box. I'm loving the the um, teamwork that you guys are having, uh, helping each other, adding on ideas. Like this is what Chatted Up Saturday is all about. So definitely Kudos to you. Kudos to you. You said, okay, this is great. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Maybe we can do something like this again during like end of the year games and summer games. Y'all let me know if y'all are interested in more games during the live. I know I do like a lot of game videos, but I kind of like this this way too because y'all are able to like throw in extra ideas with it. Yes, fun and helpful. Okay, great. All right, so are y'all saying run this? We're going to run this back towards the end of the year. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Da, 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 da. I know we're at, we're at an hour. And yes, I know that Easter is tomorrow, but we could not talk about spring games without a good old Easter egg hunt. Okay. We couldn't. We couldn't. And no, you don't have to do an Easter egg hunt relating to the Easter holiday. You can just literally go get you some after Easter sale eggs and play this game with your kids, okay? So let me say explain the games. And then she's like, yes. <laughs> we were just talking about the Easter egg hunt on our teaching by design call. <laughs> but one of my favorite things to do is Easter egg hunt. And I know I shared it with Keisha during one of our, our, our membership calls, um, the way that I would tweak the game because I did this with my kids and it lasted a little long, last, it was a little lengthy. So I'm gonna give y'all the short version, but Easter egg hunt, you hide colorful eggs all around your classroom or your living room for my homeschool parents um, or the playground. I did it with my, on my playground. Boop, boop, we had an extended extended recess um, and we hit them around the playground. Um, and then provide a basket for each player and you're gonna set a time limit for them to find as many eggs as possible. How do you make this educational? All right, I'm gonna give you guys some options. Take a worksheet, here we go, we're right back to Read works right back to um, um, k5learning.com. Um, it's really, really easy worksheets would be grammar. Grammar worksheets are, are really fun and easy. Um, vocabulary worksheets, anything like that. Um, but then you're going to cut up the sheets and actually roll them up and put them into the eggs. Um, and then if you only cut up the questions, then you throw the Easter eggs. They find the eggs when they go back to the classroom or go back, you know, inside the door you know, inside, or unless you're already playing inside, whatever. But when they're done, when all the eggs are found, their baskets are full, they then have to answer the question of that's inside the Easter eggs. So that's one. Some Easter eggs can have questions. Some Easter eggs can have candy. Or, or you can make it where after they've answered all their questions, then they get some candy. Um, another thing you can do, another thing you can do is have questions and answers inside of different eggs. Then if the kids aunt find a question, then they have to answer that question. If they find an answer, then they have to create a question with that answer. So for example, going back to the three little pigs idea, if it was one of the, the question might be, in which order did the big bad wolf blow up the three little pigs' houses? So if they found the question, then they're putting them in order. If they found the answer, then, you know, of course, it would say the straw house, then um, last, you know, the brick house. And then they have to then create a question that would fit that answer. Make sense? Um, and so you can actually, that actually requires them. We were talking, uh, Rochelle was talking about critical thinking. That requires them to like take that problem solving to another level. Um, and all of this relates to, you know, to reading. So I hope you guys enjoyed these 
15 spring games. You said so helpful. Awesome. Um, you said end of year games are needed. All right. I have you. I, I hear you and I have you. I know I have videos about um, end of year games, but I that was like, look, that was last year. You can use last year games and we can do it again live because I like this interactive way of, of doing games. So I know I enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, I just ask that you hit get the thumbs up button down below. Um, and for those watching the replay, feel free to continue the conversation down below in the chat box. You can continue the conversation. You certainly don't have to be on here live, but continue the conversation down below. Let us know. Let me know, look, which one of these games are you guys going to try this spring? Y'all know I love hearing about your experiences, how this went, how this made learning fun, easy, and effective for you and your children. All right, Rochelle said, teams, each team looks for the same color. Come on now. Yes, spin to the game. All right, so she's doing an Easter egg hunt. She said, divide up the kids in teams. Each team then looks for the same color. When they find all six, for example, they open them up to find letters inside. Then they can work to unscramble a word. Oh, I love it. Or make as many words as possible. Love that. Piggybacking off of it. I love it. Piggybacking off of it because now we're like going. All right. Let's say you guys get, a, you know, print out a story. So Reworks has the different stories. Though I just keep saying Reworks because it's free and it's just amazing. Um, and so you can literally print out. For example, six eggs, um, print out, you know, the first few sentences and you're just cutting up the worksheet, right? Then each story is in a different color. Like she said, divide up each team. That team then goes, finds one color at a time. So this team goes, looks for the yellow eggs. This team looks for the green eggs. Once they find all the eggs, they have to unscramble the story and put the story in sequential order. They could take a picture using an iPad or something of the story in the correct order then have them go hide the eggs again and then the team swap and then go find the next story or like in your example go do unscramble the next word love it love it so look Rochelle we just piggybacked off of each other yes I love it I love it um I love the whole team aspect um, because then they can keep rotating and doing all of the words or all of the stories yes yes um look Rochelle said shoot I want to play that myself <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks so much for joining in live. Y'all made this live experience amazing doing the games. So definitely, definitely, we gotta we have to do this again for the end of the school year. I am loving the the brainstorming that is happening in the chat box. For those that are watching the replay, continue the conversation down below. I have enjoyed you guys this chatted up Saturday. Let me know. Which games you play, how they go, Rochelle. Once you play the game yourself, look, we all gonna be playing. Let us know how it is and how your children are able to learn smarter, not harder. Come on now. I will see you guys next Saturday, 10 a.m., same place, same time. See you soon.